Hello everyone, it's time for another edition of Adventures in Careerland! I am your host, Adriano Magnifico. I am the career lead at the Louis Riel Arts and Technology Center. And at the Arts and Technology Center, this is a very special place where students can think about where their future may lie. It has 13 programs. The one in which we are residing at this moment is called the Broadcast Media Program. We're in a podcast studio where we create, design, implement, produce, and all kinds of other verbs for this program. And it's one of 13 that include things like baking and pastry, building trades, early childhood educator, hairstyling, plumbing, new media design, information systems. It's a place where high school students can come to think about, I wonder if I have something more to check out in me. I wonder if I can gauge something special in me. I wonder if there's a special skill that I'd like to develop. It's one of these places, because when you're in your K to 12 system, You pretty much follow an academic program with small nuances and twists and turns along there to help you develop yourself. This really pushes you to another level and asks you to get on board with a particular industry. So the broadcast media is one of those gems. I think it's the gem uh, of the 13. And it's an important program. And I'm always super happy and blessed to work with some students in that program, co-hosts. But we have one of our students, Caitlin Middlestad, who's off on an internship and that's what they do in the programs around here she's off at power 97 checking out her own skills and connecting to employers and building relationships and starting to build that all-important network that's so important when you are a young person trying to make your way in this world but luckily we have in the studio Caden Caden Siddler yep Siddler me it's the Siddler so it's Caden and me Two boys hanging yeah. out, hanging out in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. Caden, where are you going on your internship? It's uh, coming up. I'm, yeah, so I'm starting Monday, and I'm going to uh, True North to work at the Canada Life Center and do uh, moose, moose games and Jets games. So I'm pretty excited about that. So when you say do moose games and so, Jets games, are, yeah, are, 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 you maybe, pushing a, are you pushing a broom? What are you doing down there? <laughs> well, maybe the first day, but I think... <laughs> basically just shadowing uh are are, are are you sharpening skates for the players that would <laughs> oh, be really be, cool that'd be pretty nice yeah yeah we can't skate what's going on <laughs> who's sharpening these things just i can't it, move yeah. out there anyway what are no, you doing that'd be, yeah i'm gonna be shadowing so monday is uh it'll be the jets versus montreal which is pretty oh neat. my gosh yeah, which is pretty both oh our favorite my teams gosh and uh yeah so i'll be i think first day we're probably just gonna be shadowing and just watching how they how everything works and we did do a tour a couple of weeks ago, and he checked out. We checked everything out where we'd be working, but uh, so what? So what kind of things are you going to be doing? Like I know you're shadowing. You're going to be watching. Yeah. And when you're on an internship, when you're a young person from uh, a program like this, you have to be a listener mm-hmm. first, right? And yeah. You, you can't sure. jump in and say, "Oh, I want to do that. Give me that. Give me that microphone." Yeah. You, you can't do those things. Right? No. So what? Do you, down the road, in, it's a three week experience, correct? Yeah. What kinds of things do you hope to be doing there that they said, depending, it all depends on you too, right? Mm-hmm. What kind of aptitude you show, what kind of interest yeah. you show, what kind of energy you show? What do you yeah, hope to do? I think the mo- most exciting part for me would probably be doing some camera work possibly for, I don't know if they let me do the Jets games, but I heard that they might do uh, some Moose games. Mr. P said that in the past students have done that, so I might be the guy on the camera. So I think that's my most exciting part. Uh Anyway, I think most exciting part, yeah, is doing some camera work. There's going to be there's a whole stats room where they keep track of all the players' stats and what they're how the game's going. Data analytics. Yeah. So there's a few new things that we haven't done like in our program at events. Obviously, they have a little more high tech equipment there, and but uh, yeah, I'm excited to see basically how the show runs and like. Uh, can you imagine? Think about you. You're from Windsor Park Collegiate. Yeah. So think about you in grade 11 or 12. Did you oh even dream you'd be doing this in a year or two? No, but I didn't know I liked, I, I always enjoyed hockey. So, I mean, it was on my mind back in grade 10 to kind of, like if I got into this course and that, that would have been an opportunity to possibly go and do sports games. And it actually ended up happening where I go to True North and 
Yeah. So oh it's, my gosh, this is spectacular. Yeah, it's, it's spectacular. pretty exciting. So congratulations on that. And I, you, I look yeah. forward to hearing how you do. Yeah, I'm pretty and excited. And you know, wh- when the camera's askew or at a bad angle, I'll think, oh, it's got to be, that's <laughs> got to be Caden. I'm watching the game. Caden must be on the camera. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. You're going to be great. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. I, I'm excited for you. Hey, we have a, <clears throat> a really cool show today with another Windsor Park Collegiate graduate. Mm. They're just all over the place. Windsor Park yeah. just keeps churning out these wonderful people. And she was a grad way back in, I think, 2014, I believe, from Windsor Park Collegiate. And she's made her way in the world. She's had a very interesting life so far and all the choices she's made, kind of work she's doing. I'm talking about Maria Colvin. How are you? Grad from 2014. How are you? Good. You didn't have to say the way back part, but <laughs> way good. Back. Well, wait, but listen, <laughs> when I say way back, I don't... You're young, Maria. You're just, you have your life ahead of you. I, I'm worried about saying that for me. I, I'm not sure when I get up in the morning if this will be it. Anyway, I'm kidding. But this is, this is a beautiful moment. Another Windsor Park grad, and she was in my class way back when. Do you remember the class you were in of mine at Windsor Park? Yeah, film and media. Film and media. Talk about mm-hmm. that class. That was a fun, that was one of the most fun classes I've ever taught, and it was it was thrown at me saying we need a class for grade nines to attract them to the school <laughs> or to just build it. Just talk about that class. It was so much fun. I've never had so much fun teaching a class. Yeah, no, it was, it was actually really fun. Um, it was, so film and media, basically, as the name says, um, learned a lot about, uh, you know, different uh, iconic films is what stuck out to me. So Casablanca um, was uh, the one Psycho um and learning things about that and also like the term i had mentioned this to mr magnifico about how it stuck out to me uh, the medium is the message and how i still think about that all these years later and what it means that's marshall McLuhan's famous line he was a famous yeah. canadian media mogul who uh, who had worldwide worldwide acclaim that's pretty cool now i remember that class remember i always uh, all the films were in black and white hmm. We Pretty did, much, yeah. We, I would say so, yeah. No, totally. We did nothing. In fact, the deal was, I said, I'll teach this. I told the admin, I'll teach this, but I'm just doing black and white films as if they cancel <laughs> the film. No, fantastic. Do it. Oh, jeez. Anyway, it turned out to be one of the most <laughs> one, one of the most bits of fun I've ever had teaching, of course. Because, and we had people in the hallways. Do you remember? They would just sit in the hallways watching the films. And the class was packed. There were like 30, 40 kids in this room, and the class was packed. It was, it was a fun fun thing. So you're at Windsor Park. You're in grade nine. You're trying to figure out uh, that motion. What, what junior high did you come from? So I came from General Vanier. Um, so pretty, pretty close, still in Windsor Park. So it was still in uh, walking distance. So a lot of the people I had uh, graduated with um, from there were going to Windsor Park. Yeah, so you had your buddies you came with, and then there are also people coming from Frontenac and different other schools. And that's what happens in the high school. It brings the, brings the group of people together from the neighborhood who have, who have been to the elementaries. When you're coming to Windsor Park, what's going through your head as you're walking the hallways as a young person, grade nine? And is it fair to say you're a little taller than most people? <laughs> Come on. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, for, the listeners, you a for the listeners, for the listeners at home, yes, I happen to be six foot two, oh, wow. and it was it was definitely interesting navigating that um, because I had been tall pretty much all my life, um, not six two when I was five years old, but um, so it just being a taller person, being a little more shy. Um, you know, being a female, it was just a lot of attention that I didn't want. Um, I wasn't the most confident, surprise, surprise. Um, so naturally with a bunch of other kind of grade nines during that time, I was like, well, I don't want any attention on me. Um, it's a new situation. It's a new environment altogether. I'm just kind of trying to stay afloat, you know, keep close with my, uh, with my friends. And, um, you know, I had some pretty close friends, but at the same time, you know, they are comfortable navigating the other friend groups and that wasn't the case for me i had like a select few of friends that i knew and i trusted and i wasn't comfortable really getting out of my shell there so i thought it was high school early on was uh, pretty hard for me um surprise surprise but um you know it was just navigating those new situations that i didn't i didn't like those changes so where did you find though like high school is a place of survival most of the time uh for a lot of kids and it sounds like a bit for you too like you're you're fighting who you are, um, what I'm about, 
uh, what I want to do, who my friends are. You see friends gravitating to other friends. You know what I mean? That's, that's going on too. Uh, so when you're kind of thinking about, I've got to make my way, I've, I've got to, where did you find kind of your comfort zones, your safety spaces in high school? So uh, like you had mentioned, um, well, I was a volleyball player and I still do play volleyball, but that was a huge focus. And I knew after high school that I wanted to, you know, play in like college or university. I wanted to focus on that. Um, but at the same time, growing so much, like I was still trying to become good at volleyball, you know, I, it's, it's enough that you're tall, but actually being athletic and being able to move was another thing. So I would say that was like a huge focus. And um, I wasn't so significantly interested in, you know, I would say studies, like I didn't, um, it was sometimes hard for me to focus on certain things that I didn't enjoy. And um, I enjoyed more arts courses, like uh, obviously film and media, um, arts, you know, home ec, that sort of thing. But, um, you know, things that I thought would make me successful, so like math courses or science courses, I, I just wasn't interested in at all. So I was really banking on, uh, you know, making my way with uh, volleyball. So that was the primary focus. Yeah, so the volleyball, you found a space there, right? And it's kind of amazing because you played university volleyball with the U of M, I think. Yes? The other one, U of W, university of Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good for me. Good for me doing my excellent research. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) The uh, (laughs) M. Yeah, I I, I got one. Yeah, flip it. (laughs) I'm wrong. That's okay. Uh, (laughs) uh, It's the U of W is recruiting you too, right? So you're getting better. And what's that feel like when you're getting good at something? Like that's a skill that's getting good. Like universities, you don't play for a university unless you're pretty good. So, at, at, you know, at, at, as much as you're struggling sometimes with friends or who am I and what should I be taking and do I have to take this math? You're getting very good at volleyball and people are noticing that. How does that feel? That was a huge change because so early on in high school, I, d- I didn't want to be noticed. And I just, I kind of wanted to kind of move through the crowd and not be able to have people kind of focus, have their focus on me. And later on in high school, so I'm playing club volleyball and all these other things and I'm wanting to be noticed, but in, in certain, in certain ways, in certain avenues. Um, so when I started actually applying, kind of sending out my, uh, my, um, my recruiting video and like kind of my resume, that sort of thing, like the recruiting package to all these universities for volleyball. And I'm actually getting responses back. It was just like, wow, like I'm getting noticed for something that I perceive as positive and that I want to be noticed for. Um, and kind of those uh, in, um, insecurities with my height and, you know, being a taller female, like it's, it's working to my advantage. And that's kind of along those lines of what I'm being noticed for in a good way. Um, cool. So that was definitely exciting. Hey, but that's now you, you made a recruiting video. Like, did, who's making your recruiting video? Because somebody's you obviously can't do it yourself. So David Charles Colvin, my dad. Your dad, um, right on. He was at <laughs> he was at all my high school uh, volleyball games in university, and and granted, um, you know, I would say it, it was it was a good team, but it wasn't anything like any um, quad quad A schools that are. You know, a lot of their team is all these, you know, potential university players. So I was kind of, it was, it was high school volleyball was really just about having fun for me and not necessarily about, um, you know, like how well I'm playing or anything like that. It was different than club volleyball, that's for sure. So, but, but you uh, gotta be, now it's awesome with your dad. I remember meeting your dad, he's a super guy. Um, yeah. Uh, but there's gotta be, you're from the 3A school and you got Dakota and Glenlawn in your catchment area there down, you know, in, in Lure Riel. So those are the big 4A schools. So it must have felt pretty good, though, to think from my little school, and it was a little school. There's like 400 people at that school at the time or so. Um, you're getting noticed. Uh, the video's helping, obviously, but you still have to have the skill. I can send videos of myself to the UW. I don't think I'm getting a sniff. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear, Caden, Caden, how's your rolling roll skills? Let's get oh, a video. Not great. I'm saying you've got to be pretty good. So that must be, and you're developing your skill set, and you're finding where your your sense of who you are is really valued, right? Yeah. So it's it's totally tied into volleyball at this point. You know, I'm I'd say I'm a nice person, and I I think I'm pretty funny. I make people laugh. Um, but at this point, it's it's totally tied into volleyball. It's totally tied into like my, my athletic, uh, 
I don't know, my athletic prowess. Um, so I've, I've totally just, you know, kind of put studies and, um, you know, my education, not to, not to the wayside necessarily, but that's not the primary focus at all at this point. And so going into university, that was, if that was probably like the hugest changes, switching from not only focusing on volleyball, but moving to the studies as well. Hey, how were the studies? So you went to UW, what did you start taking? So it's from what I could remember, it was different than what you would be able to do at the other school, U of M. Um, but, uh, <laughs> what other so school? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You, you <laughs> so, another school? It's just the U of yeah, it's just you the one. Done, you, haven't, you haven't done your research, Maria. There's only one school, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, one, only one school in my eyes. Um, so um, it, it was different than U of M where you could do like U1, I think it's called, yes, or yes, like very yes. introductory this, courses. to generic program, yeah. Yeah, like to get acclimatized basically to university. So um, I kind of did research on my own sort of, 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 of as much as I could do and you know, just a side note for those going into university, that's just a, a total nightmare is figuring out what courses you need, what which ones you need to get into. So, um, but at my at this point, I was enrolling into very general, like, you know, introduction to conflict resolution, um, you know, sociology, psychology, like those intro courses, um, obviously not getting into stats too much, because I was like, okay, I'm I can, I can count, but I'm not, I'm not getting into stats. That's for sure. But so are, are you avoiding math altogether and science courses at, at university when you first get in there? Yeah, 100% because <laughs> I knew, <laughs> I knew that whatever I had gotten into, um, as a career that like math or any of those types of, uh, jobs or positions like that's, that wouldn't fulfill me and it wouldn't make me happy. Um, so I knew like just more like general, like getting a feel of working with people, like that sort of thing um, is what I valued more versus things I just straight up wasn't, wasn't good at. So um, that was like math. So you never thought about becoming a film media guru, like 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 a director of film noir or like film noir kind of. I love, I love, <laughs> I love watching them. I love eating a lot when I'm watching these movies. Right. I love critiquing them like I am a director, yeah, but so as many. soon as I get creative, it's, no, yeah, it's yeah. bad. There's so, so, much, yeah. there's so much potential wasted there, my dear. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, like the, I like the consumption part, not the uh, yeah, outlet. The popcorn. I want to be yeah. a professional popcorn eater at movie houses. <laughs> I called it a movie yeah. house. Do they even call it that anymore? Yeah. Oh, I just got dated. I just got dated again. Oh gosh, thank you. Is there a U of, is there a U of M out there? Anyway. Good boy. Anyway, tell me more about those courses. Which ones which ones connected to you? And and you thought, oh, I like this. Or what were you thinking going to university? Oh, am I in the right place? Or what's going on? Like a lot of students who go into it, and as much as you said there's a U of M with a, a U1 program. You were kind of taking a U1 program at, at, at U of W because those, the courses you mentioned, the sociologies, the psychologies, are all kind of courses that U1 kids take at the U of M. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. What yeah. So, it, yeah. Um, so, at this point, like I was registering for the courses, but, you know, we had an, um, an academic advisor helping like the, the athletes as well, because I'm doing all of this with, you know, other, uh, first year, like, uh, students who are going to be on my volleyball team as well. Um, so I'm just figuring out this way, but of course I've already felt kind of a little, not isolated, but all my other, um, all these other girls that I'm going to be playing volleyball with, they're taking those like, um, different like math or stats courses or kinesiology courses. And I'm like, well, I'm kind of the only one floating out here. <laughs> Um, you so know, what are those conversations theology. like at, at, at coffee room? Oh, what my. are those conversations like? <laughs> well, they're talking about all these labs they have to do, and I'm like, well, you know what? I'm uh, one of my uh, projects that I'm doing is I'm just going to be like sitting and looking at people and seeing how like the, the way that they look or the way that they they walk type of thing, and it's just yeah, no, it's not, unrelatable. Um, but <laughs> so <laughs> I'm 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 taking these courses. With again, so like in year one, I'm like, you know what, I want to play pro after this. I want to play pro volleyball. Again, I'm not doing anything 
outside of the practices that I'm doing to kind of meet that dream. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what, I'll, I'll move by with the university courses, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of financial help from my parents, but you know, and I'm still just, you know, getting by type of thing. Um, and that, you know, again, surprise, surprise didn't bode well for me <laughs> my first year because, you know, all these, like, because the thing about being a student athlete is you have to, it's as much of being a student as it is being an athlete. You have to be good at both. You can't just do one or the other. So that's, uh, that was a turning point for me as well after my first year. Did you have any second thoughts ever about what you're doing in uh, university? Yes. Yeah, so in my first year, I was like, well, I'm taking all these general courses or general as can be courses. And I, I hadn't even thought about what I wanted to do as a career because it was always volleyball at the forefront. So nearing the end of, at the end of my first year when grades could have been much better, I was like, okay, maybe I should start focusing on kind of what I want to move towards um, as a career. Uh, so I think when I actually solidified on, you know, what I wanted to do was in maybe like my third or my fourth year. And by that time, that's a lot of money um, and a lot of credits that you're moving through because certain uh, like prerequisites. Uh, mom and dad are foot in the bill. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're retired now. It's fine. <laughs> they're going on trips. It doesn't matter. <laughs> they don't look back. They, they don't look back dad, and cry. Dad goes <laughs> into his left pocket breast pocket pulls out the checkbook yeah. what do you need uh, don't worry about it Maria. i've got it i've got it <laughs> they still us uh, they, they'll call me andrew sometimes it's fine that's my <laughs> sister's name <laughs> it's whatever <laughs> but yeah no and i like and there was that guilt that so my parents are helping me obviously like financially which is definitely you know I, i'm very lucky for that but there was that guilt that okay well I want to be good at these studies and, you know, get a good career and move into that. But like, I, I want to focus on volleyball too. And uh, volleyball is much more fun. Um, and I'm getting more um, kind of fulfillment from that. So that was kind of those thoughts that I was struggling with in university as well. That's a, an interesting path. So when you're getting at what point in your degree and you're getting a degree, an arts degree, I imagine here, because you're, you have this incredible aversion to the sciences and math. <laughs> Uh, so I imagine you're getting an arts degree. Um, at some point in the degree, did you finish off the degree? Uh, did you make, um, like what, what kind of pathing did you decide on by the end of, of this experience? Cause the UW, it, it, you can play five years as a player. Can you not? Yeah, that's correct. Um, I ended up doing four because like kind of during that time. So the third, fourth year. I was like, okay, now I really need to focus on my studies, which a little late. Um, but <laughs> at that time, I was like, okay, you know what? No I need to, me. unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kept switch to basketball at this point. Um, but so I'm like, okay, you know, the, the way I need to focus is I need to drop volleyball completely at this level um, because you know, it, and it's different for other universities, but for my time, it was you're practicing every day. So that's like about a two hour practice. You're working out every day as well. So weights Monday, Wednesday, Friday, cardio Tuesday, Thursday. Then you're um, like, let's say playing two games over a weekend. So that's Friday and Saturday. Um, and then you kind of have to navigate that in between doing your studies, having a social life, you know, eating well, sleeping, all this other stuff and going to your courses because you have to be a full-time student as well. And so of, that's about... And of course, like, fitting sure. in your film noir viewing experiences. Yeah, smoking a cigar, yes. watching jackets. <laughs> smoking like, jackets. Yeah, yeah, you, have to yeah. Fit, you have to fit those important experiences in as well. Yeah, yeah, no. So <laughs> it's all this other stuff, but yeah, exactly. So like I just realized that, okay, the way I need to focus, you know, it's, it's fantastic that some other student athletes are, be, are able to do this, but you know, it's just not working out for me. And it was really hard because again, my social circle was people in the volleyball world or like other athletes. And now that I'm moving away from that, I basically had to from in my mind, it felt like I was restarting again. And this is first year in university, but now I have, I'm moving away from my teammate friends because they're busy with playing volleyball or they've graduated. Um, so moving from that that's when i took a serious look and it's like okay the courses that i've taken what can help me get 
a degree that I wanted to take. So I ended up graduating um, with an undergrad in uh, conflict resolution and human rights, um, both things that I, I really do value and, and enjoyed learning about. Um, and it was, it, it's not like the whole degree was a throwaway. It was just more like I realized late that these are things that I enjoy and want, want to take over to what I'm going to be doing in my career eventually. And that's important, Maria. Like it's, it's almost okay to do some of that exploration and to have pieces fall away, like the volleyball falls away kind of, and some people mm-hmm. move on who are in your, in your kind of um, trusted space. And, and then you have to start making some calls and build new relationships. I think that's what university honestly ought to be all about. Where yeah, you, and you figure out a path by experiencing yeah. and meeting and building networks and, and just and, and having them leave and go and come and choosing, right? Exactly. Like I totally understand with people like and with the concern that, you know, finances and money, obviously those are big things, but being thinking back to when I was actually scared about what people would think of me or how I was navigating, you know, this university life is just like, it really is like hindsight is 2020 because you're not getting physically hurt by, you know, like having people worried about what, what you're doing, what, how you're dressing, all these other things. It's, it's really just like what matters to you and what you want to study or kind of plan for the future, because at the end of the day, you're going to be living that life, not to get too uh, introspective no, <laughs> here, but, um, but it's, it's, it's really just like, you're the one who's going to be living that life and doing the career that you want to do. And it doesn't even have to go through university. It could be going through college. It could be going through the trades. It could be yes. not even getting a higher education at this point. Like it's, it's, it's really what you want to do. It and could be a gap year running yeah. off to uh, Europe or something. It could be all kinds of possibilities. That's that helping you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That sounds frightening personally to me, <laughs> but if that's what you want to do, go to Thailand, you know, like, because it, if it's something that you find fulfillment over, then absolutely, like, go off, do your thing. But you have to have the experiences. I call them always, we talk about collecting the dots so you can connect yeah. them. And you're, you've collected a lot of dots. And so you're beginning, I like what you said, I start looking at what I've actually taken and reflecting. And we don't spend time reflecting about what's important to us or yeah. what we've done and why we've done it. We don't think about what our why is. Right. We just keep consuming courses. We keep consuming experiences and we need to stop and reflect. Most most institutions don't give you that chance, especially high school. Did high school ever stop and say, hey, let's think about everything. Let's think about those 30 credits we just completed. Did you ever did did it ever stop and ask you that? Yeah. And like even with that. So I there was for sure some other students or some other kids that were like, oh, you know what? I want to do this in university. And seeing them like kind of through like, let's say social media or things like that, they've done those things, which is great. But I wouldn't say that's the overarching theme of what everyone is thinking because in high school, so again, being a taller lady, I'm, I'm worried about how people are perceiving me a little too much. I'm trying to be good at a sport that, you know, I'm still trying to be good at like moving my limbs because when you're growing so much, like that's a lot of physical toll on you. Um, And then I'm just trying to kind of make my way into these different courses. I'm not focused on my five-year plan. I'm not thinking about all these other warnings about high school teachers saying, you know what, they're not going to care as much about you in university as we do here. Like I'm not yeah. taking those they things to heart that. and remembering. Those are our best lines when you guys are getting too noisy. In the <laughs> University is not going to put up with this. I'll yeah. tell you right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're waving your cane in the air. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. You know, I just, I, I was just a Santa Claus at our community club. And um, I felt that way. All these little children coming to me, and I'm, they're oh, looking boy. at me, and I thought, this beard me, I feel like Santa Claus right now. For the first time in my life, I actually feel like good old Père Noel. I feel like 100 years old here. <laughs> <laughs> it, does, on your uh, chest. it does. <laughs> Waving my cane. Thank you for that. Anyway. You're all. giving them the university spiel when uh, they're five years old. They're like, <laughs> yeah. just, give me the I candy know. guy. So what would you like for Christmas, uh, <laughs> Sheila? Well, it doesn't matter. You need an education for that. Next. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so this is, it's, 
you get into the world of you're in human resources now. So how do you even find this space? You finish off with a degree, an arts degree, which is which has a really interesting set of majors, right? Conflict resolution, human rights, really interesting majors. Uh, they're 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 powerful ones about getting in touch with yourself, right? And about what's important to you because you have to examine those and they connect to you you know, vicariously, don't they? <laughs> like you're feeling these things and, and you connect to some of these issues. So then you move into human resources of all things. What makes you think about human resources connected to your degree? Yeah, so uh, conflict resolution, human rights, those are those were things that I was really drawn to during like my undergrad time um, because there was just aspects about both that I really wanted to see transferred over to my career. Um, you know, there's... Surprisingly enough, businesses aren't knocking down my door saying, you have a conflict resolution and human rights degree. We want you in this high paying position. So at that point, I was thinking, okay, at this point, like I, and I really wanted to do, take it a step further. And, you know, mediation wasn't, you know, a strong um, passion of mine. Um, so I met with our uh, academic advisor, Gina Lowen at uh, Menno Simons College. Uh, so that's where a lot of my oh, courses Gina. are. When it comes to our uh, career symposiums, great, great a dream. Awesome. dream. She is fantastic. Dream hero. And, and she was Mino Simmons, right? So Mino Simmons. Yeah, um, Mino Simmons, but, whatever it's called. There. And well, she no. is. Uh, um, I don't think they have that anymore, do they? Or they have, have they changed the name of it and all that kind of thing? Or, or are you aware of that? Or it's still there. It's still there. Okay. I don't. Okay. You're just. I don't know what story. <laughs> I don't know what story you're in. But no. Um, so <laughs> it's. Still there, um, but I was <laughs> once again for the I'm first time. I'm waving my um, cane right now in the air. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Kidding, help me out. No, um, but so I'm meeting with Gina. She's like, I'm basically unloading all of this on her, saying, you know what, I'm doing this degree. Like, I don't know necessarily what I want to do because I knew it had something to do with, you know, themes of conflict resolution and human rights, but I don't know what specific industry I'm wanting to go in. I, I know I don't want to tamper too much into mediation or negotiation. So I'm basically unloading this onto her, this, this poor woman. And she's, and we're just talking about other passions that I have outside of those things. So it's like, okay, well, what, what do you foresee yourself doing as a part of your career? Like, it doesn't need to be a specific industry. What do you enjoy? I enjoyed, you know, working with people. I enjoyed, you know, like you mentioned, connecting dots, like if there was any issues, I wanted to be able to, you know, walk people through them, like see what other options there are for that. Um, I did also have a bit of a passion for employment law as well. So that's where the human rights piece tagged in. So she thought, you know, there is a program through the University of Winnipeg. So there's the professional applied continuing education. Um, so they have different programs um, that you could take through that program. Um, and she said, well, why don't you try human resources management? So you don't need to be a manager to take it. There's, it's just an HR program that you can take. And, you know, there's networking opportunities. There's an internship at the end. There's all these kind of furthering things that you can do instead of just graduating and then kind of saying, well, now what? So that was a, that was a really awesome uh, suggestion from her. So that's what I ended up doing for, for a full-time year. Now, how long does it take? Now, that's the PACE program at the University of Winnipeg. That's their extended education program. And uh, yeah. there's, there's a lot of programs there. And I, I, I like what you did because you had your degree. A lot of people go into the PACE world and they find great and shorter ways to get an education and to get their footing somewhere. So that gave you an extra. How long did it take to get your HR? It's an HR uh, designation or diploma. What do they call it? So it's a human, so it's the human resources management. Uh, so it was a diploma program. Uh, so the program that I did was a full-time comprehensive year. Um, so it was like Monday to Friday, eight to four and courses throughout it. Um, but you could do like a part-time program. So that was just a little longer, but you know, you had more time, let's say if you had to work full-time for example, or things like that. Um, and it was also nice because, you know, um, that program, you didn't have to, it didn't have to be an after degree program. It could be like, for example, if you were working for 20 years in a certain industry and you wanted to switch, um, you know, you could enroll in that program as well. You know, let's say if you only had your high school GED, you could go into that program. Exactly. Um, so that's, exactly. 
So that was really nice to um, be around those to those uh, students as well that you can get those other viewpoints or mindsets that you know let's say it's it's awesome being able to graduate from university with you know an undergrad but you know there's other mindsets that you could be kind of pulling from the pool type of thing that yes, uh, yes. you know that you wouldn't necessarily get just in a university classroom too and the university classroom is important it kind of builds your communication skills builds your analytical skills yeah it, it, it builds all kind of even your presentation and your kind of interrelationship skills interpersonal yeah. skills but this one helps you specialize. The PACE one says, okay, I'm gonna try project management. You join a program and you immerse yourself in project management. Or I'm gonna try yeah. HR like you did. You immerse yourself in HR. So you're using all the skills that you developed in your university program, and now you're zeroing in on something. That's what I like about the PACE program. And, and I, even the U of M's extended education program, that, that place out there called the U of M. Anyway, <laughs> I, did, I did get a PACE. I'm a career employment coach through yep. pace, through pace, and I thought it was a pretty good program. And it just allowed me to specialize and do something a little more specific, focused, and in the time frame I needed. So you did it in a full year, but you can do it at night. A lot of folks do these things at night while they're working, so they can build their 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 skill set, their credentials, their reputation, and their ability to move on. So pace is a good program. I'll promote it here, right in front of you, U W. Not a sponsor of the program, but maybe they should be. Anyway. <laughs> you only learned what U of W was yeah. this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we've learned what U of W <laughs> is, which is an amazing thing. So, it's, you know, yeah. my education, I'm wait, you can't see me, but I'm, I'm, I'm feistily waving my cane in the air right now with, <laughs> with energy. He is. I yeah, believe yeah, it. Yeah, Caden, Caden is verified. He's throwing a cane around. He hit me in the eye. Anyway. <laughs> So you went out to HR. So what are you doing now with your HR education? Did that for a year and you took everything off and just did it. You went lock, stock and barrel right back to school to do it for a year. Um, well, it was it was an easy decision because when I graduated from my undergrad, so that's when COVID was starting. Oh, um, <laughs> so it was an easy decision um, to because, well, I'm not I'm not going any places. I'm not traveling. So the original plan was I was going to graduate in the spring, then start up this program in the in the uh, fall, so around September. But of course, COVID happened around, like in Manitoba, I think around, uh, it got really got serious in March of 2020, yeah. around that. Um, so the first wave. Um, so then I was like, well, okay, like I'm not necessarily doing anything else. Um, so it was, the, it was a program that was entirely online. Um, so throughout that full time year, you know, the, the amount of times that my Wi-Fi had, you know, let's say crapped out, pardon my French, um, or like all these networking opportunities that were kind of like really, really promoted and, you know, people were getting excited over, you can't do that in person anymore. Um, so there was a few things that were happening, you know, online specifically, but it was just like there were some things that, uh, you know, had to be affected just because of the pandemic, um, which is fair enough but um it was it was starting to become worrisome because even our internship opportunities were dwindling too um so a class of about i want to say like maybe 30 or 40 people now there's only and there was going to be 30 or 40 internship opportunities but now there's about 20 19 mm -hmm. so yes having those dealt out as well which it was pretty stressful too. Um, so kind of figuring out, okay, like if I can't bank on this internship being my next career placement, kind of what I need to do, what do I need to do there? Um, so after I did graduate the program, I just, I, I had worked part time just before I would find uh, my next opportunity, but uh, I was able to get on with uh, Shared Health, which was a great opportunity as well. Okay, so where are you at right now? You went through all that. <laughs> you're easily, are you I'm out of breath. Stressed? Yeah. You know, are, are you easily stressed or like, were you getting really stressed at this time or were you just kind of taking it one step at a time and go, okay, I'll deal with it. Move on. How were you feeling at that time? Cause COVID affects everyone differently, right? Yeah, I was, I was definitely um, lucky enough that, you know, my, um, my immediate family or friends or people that I knew they weren't um, uh, like terribly affected. Uh, by the pandemic. Um, it was definitely very lucky for us, but um, I was definitely nervous over like, okay, I have, let's say elderly, um, you know, family members that I'm really worried about, you know, yes. what's going to happen to me? Yes. Like how serious is this, 
is this virus, is this disease? And that was a huge stress. Um, but in terms of kind of my, um, my work life, I felt very, uh, uh, yeah. very, very comfortable that it was, it was still going to happen because the work I was doing was shared health. So I was working in an HR capacity there. Um, it was still something that, uh, they were, they would see carry over, you know, when the pandemic was, was to end. Um, so the work that I was doing there was, was still consistent enough that I would still have a job, which was very, very great. Um, but uh, moving even forward through that, I know we're still moderately in the pandemic, but um, now I'm actually uh, working full time in an HR capacity uh, with a place called People Corporation. Um, so they're a they're a group benefits provider among uh, you know different things. But um, I've I've found my place here, and I've been here for about I want to say close to eight months. So since March of this year. All right. And so as an HR person, what do you do? Like let let our let our eight or nine listeners understand what an HR person does. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I support um, people who have the title of uh, HR business partner. So those HR BPs they assist leaders of different businesses directly uh, with HR you know services or questions or inquiries things like that. I assist the HR BP. So I'm like HR support in that sense. But the world of HR is so vast that I'm just barely skimming the service in like what I'm doing. So for example, there's more specialized like avenues like compensation and benefits, talent acquisition, um, let's say compliance, employee experience, that sort of thing. Training. Um, there must be a lot of training folks out there too in the HR field, right? Yeah, so that would be more like um, like change, our change management team as well. Um, so those are just examples of what my comp, my my company uh, provides in terms of their HR team. But um, you know, different companies are are so like vast with like what they what their HR folks do, for example. Or you know, some places may not have an HR department, which I was definitely surprised about when I was initially learning about that too. Um, but that's you know that's the thing that the learning doesn't stop yes. when you graduate which yeah. well, I was thanking my lucky stars, that's for sure, after my uh, university ordeal, learning about all these things that I had to, uh, you know, pick up on. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm at a place where I'm, I'm definitely happy. And it's not like I'm, I'm finally at a place where I'm not searching for, okay, well, what am I going to do next? It's now like, okay, well, I'm, I'm doing things that are advancing myself in my career, but it's not that, okay, I need to take this program or I need to do this. I'm, I'm at a place where I'm happy now, but at the same time, it's taken two programs, you know, some life lessons to figure that out. So it's, it's definitely not something I, I came across right away. Hmm. Okay. So now do you have this CPHR designation then, or is that something you're working toward or did that come with the PACE designation piece? Yeah, uh, definitely a great question because so with the program that I took, the PACE uh, HR program. So if you got a certain uh, GPA, grade point average, um, then you would be able to have the national knowledge knowledge exam to move towards the CPHR designation waived. And I was able to get that um, that uh, above that GPA. Uh, so I don't need to take this knowledge exam. That's like almost like a like a CPA exam for um, accountants or those in accounting. Yes. Um, so now all I need is, you know, work experience. So I'm continuing working for, I think, maybe another um, less than a year now, and then I'll be a, a full CPHR, which is a chartered professional in human resources. Oh uh, right now, I'm just a candidate. You got yeah. an exemption from the exam. Here were you students struggling, thinking, I don't know what I want to do. You had top marks. So that must have been a 4.0 grade point, wasn't it? Yeah, like around around that, I would say. Um, but yeah, no, it's just say it, close say enough. it. It's the first step to recovery. No. You're good enough, and doggone it, people love you. You're a you four know, point I, I, great boy. <laughs> no, people love me. Um, no, <laughs> um, please, no paparazzi. Um, but yeah, so and that's like another like turning point in my life where it's like, okay, like I was able to do something positive like with the grades that I had gotten in, it wasn't because I was good at volleyball. It wasn't because, you know, all these other things that I was worried about. It was, I, I had studied, I had worked hard and I was able to get like this large knowledge exam waived 
And now I just need to That's an enormous complete work thing. experience. Can you imagine studying for that thing? <laughs> oh my I can't because I'm not gonna. Yeah, never, never again. <laughs> never more. Never, never more. Anyway, <laughs> fantastic. Good for you. And that's just a tribute to your hard work. Like there's been a lot of uncertainty in your life. Is that fair? where you're not sure you're doing? But you're making calls and you're moving forward on them and you never step off the beaten path. Or, or, or you know, I should say you keep stepping off the beaten path because I'm going to explore this. I'm going to check this. I'm going to try this. I'm going to talk to someone about this. Like you're on a path of discovery and learning. Is that what it's been for you? Do you feel that way? For sure. And coming from being like I would say an introverted um, anxious person, um, not with my friends, but with just generally other people, it was so hard to be able to reach out for help thinking that, you know, like it, it's just, it's, it's better if I just hold it in and, you know, struggle on my own versus, you know, seeing if someone can help me and maybe they can help me, um, which is definitely not the case um, because really all of the major milestones or steps that I reached in my life is because I was able to ask for help and, you know, yes. overcome that uncomfortableness of, okay, yes. like I feel physically sick having to yes. talk to this person who it's their job to help students yes. and to assist them, it's like so career, academic right? advisors. But it takes it's, courage. It takes courage. You show yeah. a lot of courage doing that. And most kids sit in, in the front rows. Profs, profs will ask any questions. No one puts a hand up, even though, you know, yeah. in the lecture hall of 300, 290 people have no idea what he's talking about. They're afraid yeah. to put up their hand. And I felt that way when I went to university. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not putting up my hand. I don't want to look like an idiot. I'm, I'll be the only guy in this room. And someone's dying for someone to put that hand up. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and it, like it, it doesn't cost you anything extra. It's not, someone's not going to snipe you from the top row. It's, it's literally, you're asking the question because you're there to learn. Everyone's there to learn. Right. Um, um, unless someone's taking a nap, which I've seen happen. So maybe they are there to learn and they're just tired. That's fine. Um, but it's ever, like you're there to learn. You're there to, you've, you've paid, you, you've paid to be there. Yes. Like you're paying money. You're paying this, this person who's uh, teaching yeah. you money. Yeah, so it's like, that, right? like it's, yeah, like it's, it's, it's their privilege to be there. We're paying them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk to. talk more about uh, Casablanca. Um, like, that's how <laughs> keep talking. Keep talking. <laughs> of all the gin joints in the world, she had to walk into mine. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. A, that was I. I brought it up. That's the, I'm okay. sorry, Caden. You, you, you brought it out. I'm, I'm I'm furiously waving my cane. The um, <laughs> the uh, hey, think about if you're walking into a grade eleven class right now. What would you what what would you say to them about making the path and moving forward? What is some what is something you say? Cheap advice. Well, well I'm getting paid by the hour here, so um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm being contracted out now. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah, just like thinking about like the bare like the bare minimum, thinking about okay, well, literally, what's the worst thing that could happen if you raise your hand, you ask a question, like maybe someone's like, okay, well, like I want to go to my next class, like let's move on, like it's it can't physically hurt you to ask a question or reaching out for help let's say um because it's for one it's it's better to know what your options are versus you're kind of left wondering and eventually you won't have any options because you're not reaching out hmm. so just ask ask the questions you want to ask sometimes um even if let's say i'm i'm in a new situation and i don't have any questions that to ask but no one's no one else is asking any questions i'll Sometimes I'll just mix them some up if I'm like if I want to get the person yeah. talking more and like um, because let's let's say if they're sticking to their notes and you know sometimes they'll even get them talking about like something that they're passionate about for example or they'll be covering information that they they didn't cover um, and it's because I asked my my uh, sneaky <laughs> made up question but that's because you know like at this point moving from being a totally introverted anxious person I love to talk yes. I love yeah. to ask questions and I love to connect with people that way. And that's so the, it's like, and that's the yeah. innate curiosity that's so quelled mm -hmm. as we go through the school system. There's so many statistics that show just, you know, kids in at grade four and five are creative geniuses and then they become like nothing. Like their, their brain is on kind of mm -hmm. dormancy mode by the time they get to grade 12 and, and university. It takes, 
a little bit. It takes some extra work to become curious again. I mean, do you remember how curious you were as a kid and how how non-curious you became in high school about yeah. things as you just consumed things? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Rejoicing onward. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's uh, hey, we're going to do something here called Quick Cues. And I turn it over to Caden. Uh. And you gotta be you gotta be on top of your game here, Maria. So, Caden, tell us what this is. All right. So I got a few questions here, and you're just gonna—they're called quick cues, and you're gonna answer as fast as you can. And and uh, yeah, are you uh, are you ready for them? Oh, I'm ready. All righty. <laughs> First up, we got Tim Hortons or Starbucks. Tim. Instagram or TikTok. Instagram. Super speed or super strength. Super strength iPhone or Android? iPhone. Movies or novels? Movies. Win the lottery or find true love? Win the lottery. Sweet or savory <laughs> treats? Savory. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Summer or winter? Winter. Cash or debit? Debit. Math or English? English. <laughs> yeah, and uh, what is your favorite podcast? It's got to be Adventures in Careerland. Yeah. <laughs> you have given us the ability to actually upload this thing onto the internet. That's an excellent <laughs> answer. Yes. <laughs> hey, anyway, and I like your answer about true love or cash. You'll take the cash. I like that. Yeah, that was a quick answer. Um, anyway. Because I found true love already. Okay, but I'm thinking you can also uh, just buy true love. You'll have the money to do it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so just yeah. keep keep that great heartfelt feeling going, Maria, about finding yeah, I, I won't. I won't share this link with uh, my partner. That's for sure. No, that's for sure. And you know what? Um, I just love your story about... Uh, just feeling like I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I'm trying things. Yeah. But I love that you're trying things. And when you're trying things out, things stick to you. And little bits and pieces are sticking to you as you move along to the point where you find something that feels quite satisfying. And I suspect you're going to do more. I, I encourage you to obviously experience as much as you can more. And I don't know what your life will look like in 10 years. It might look very different because of your you seem yeah. to have this innate curiosity and, a, and desire just to keep to keep trying, to keep looking out for things, to keep exploring. I think that's a wonderful, a wonderful way to think and live and work. I appreciate it. No, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. And I love having you here and I love having you on this podcast. And uh, you've been, I think you'll be a real inspiration because many students yeah. think I don't know what to do. And it's okay not to know what to do as long as you're on the path and looking around yeah. and, you know, and sniffing around and, and, and trying to find and trying things. I well, because even now, yeah, like even now, sometimes I'll be like, oh, why did that person say that? Or why did they have to say that type of thing? Um, and it's, yeah, it's it's definitely more interesting when you ask the questions because you're getting other information and let's say you're not getting the answer you wanted. But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, then I have this other path that I'm going to be going down. Um, and a lot of times qu asking questions has made me physically sick or feel sick to my stomach. But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, that's just another thing I was able to overcome and I'm going to be stronger because of it. So right. highly recommend asking questions. Yes. That's awesome. And that's, I, I think this will be inspirational for some high school students. Yeah. Lots well, need to get out of their shell. Yes. And, yeah. Uh, that's a great yeah. point, Caden. It, it just helps you get out of your shell a bit, right? Yeah. And, and move because we are in, we're all, we are in our own little cocoon sometime thinking about yeah. I, I don't want to step out of this space anyway. Hey, I appreciate you being with us, Maria. It's, we, we've talked for a long time. I, yeah, I, 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 I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know we had it in us. But <laughs> you had me gabbing for a while. We had you gabbing for a while. You, you, <laughs> and you think you're an introvert. No, you're fantastic. You're a fantastic talker and speaker and very yeah. inspirational stuff. So I appreciate you being with us. Yeah. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That is our final episode of season seven. Is that amazing? We've been doing this for seven seasons. Wow. So I appreciate wow. all our listeners. I appreciate Caden who's here today. Yeah. Caitlin who can't be with us today because she's on her internship and Micah in the production studio, making sure all this sound is hooked up and, and works. So that's yeah. fantastic. So that's it for another edition of Adventures in Careerland. <laughs>